Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Manitoba Arts Network's second digital creation swap. We are so excited you could join us. I'm Jen Beaupre, and I will be the host of tonight's event. Manitoba Arts Network connects, showcases, and promotes visual and performing artists with communities across Manitoba. And I'd like to introduce Roseanne to provide us with some land acknowledgements. Thanks, Jen. The Manitoba Arts Network and our members live and work on Treaty 1, 2, 3, and 5 territories. We acknowledge and appreciate and thank the past, present, and future generations of the Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, Dene peoples, and the Métis Nation, as well as the Inuit people who have a strong community here in Manitoba. Thank you, Roseanne. As part of Manitoba Art Network's dynamic online programming aims at overcoming the barriers of the current pandemic to consistently provide access to the arts, the digital creation swap was created. Over the course of the next today and three more months, musicians and visual artists will be brought together across geographic boundaries to create new collaborative projects, drawing inspiration from each other's work. I want to add a quick explanation of what, what the artists are actually doing behind the scenes. So what Manitoba Arts Network has done is pair up a visual artist and a musician. Uh, and each artist is provided with three pieces of the other artist's work to observe and derive inspiration from. They then choose one of those three pieces for their grand inspiration. And from that piece that they choose, they create a brand new work of their own. So that's what, that's what the artists are doing behind the scene. We would like to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for funding this series of five total creative swaps. Um, that's, it's a very, very wonderful program that I'm very excited to be hosting tonight and have been a part of as well myself as an artist. Now our artists tonight have created their pieces, they've recorded their videos, and they're ready to showcase for you tonight, followed by a live question and answer with both artists. Now we're going to watch their creations. First, I'm going to introduce our artists for the evening. Leaf Rapids is Carrie Latimer's opportunity to croon about vultures circling their prey, barbershop stabbings, and love letters from smallpox quarantines in her disconcertingly sweet voice. Their sound has been described as cinematic folk and includes the eerie sounds of the theremin. <laughs> if you missed that. Sarah Fuller is a Canadian artist who works across the mediums of photography, video, and installation. She holds an MFA from the University of Ottawa and a BFA in photography from Emily Carr University. Her work in public and private collections include the Canada Council for the Arts Art Bank, Ottawa, and the Walter Phillips Gallery, Banff, and more. I'm going to ask you guys if there's anything else you'd like to add about yourselves before we begin. Carrie, Leaf Rapids? Um, no, just that I'm really happy to be part of this project and I enjoyed it very much. Awesome. And Sarah, is there anything you'd like to add to your bio that we've missed? Uh, no, I think that's good. Uh, I was also really excited to be part of this too and I'm, I'm looking forward to tonight. So, Well, let's see Sarah's video. They said to get your suitcase packed It is splitting at the seams It is splitting at the seams I wonder when you pressed your ball Flesh was it sweet? We were always wilder than thee. We were always wilder than thee. 
project so much uh i think we're gonna move right into into your video leaf rapids let's do it i'm tethered to you Twilight sky. 
Awesome. <laughs> oh, you guys, I am just so honored to be in both of your presence. I'm such a, oh, I'm so, so excited. For both of you. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Hits me right in the feels. Well, let's talk. Let's talk. So it sounds like you guys maybe have connected a bit behind the scenes. Yes. Really? A, a little bit, a little bit, just mess little messages. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, so now have you seen each other's work though? The new pieces? Is this your first time witnessing the new works? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, Sarah, why don't you first talk to me about what you just heard? The new piece that Leaf Rapids has created. What do you think? Oh, I loved it. I just want to listen, listen to you play music all night, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was really lovely. Yeah, I, I was trying to catch all the lyrics, but um, it, it was just a lovely, yeah, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I can't form the words maybe right away, but I really, I really enjoyed it listening to Do the you, music. Yeah. It was really beautiful. Do you <laughs> Sorry. feel like, no, I know it's really intense. So when you, when you think about the piece you created and the song that, sh that they created in response, do you feel a correlation in your head and in your artist's mind and in your artist's heart? Do you feel mm -hmm. that correlation? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure, um, like for me, I don't know, this This is what I pick up on, but some of the lyrics talk about you're with me and the and I'm thinking about the birds and like, I mean, I don't know if this was a thought behind it, but um, that original work was really about our connection between humans and nature and um, industry and how that affects wildlife. So it's, it seems it, I, that's what I, that's where I go a little bit with it, though that may not have been the, the, the impetus or whatnot, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so exactly cool. what I was thinking. Ah, like, cool. The collage and the, and the connection and just being so disconnected right now. I And I usually write kind of darker themes, but I thought I just wanted to write about being connect, connecting to it and, and nature connecting with the cities and the, and the murmuration of the birds, just their, their cosmic connection that you can't explain and the human, yeah, about connection, really. Cool. This process is really neat because it's very much kind of like they say in improv. It's very yes and. So you take the work and you're like, yes, and, and you kind of just add your spin on it. So so I, I'd like to turn the table. Uh, Carrie, what did you think as you watched the new piece form that Sarah created? Oh, it's funny. I, I want to look at them for longer. But to me, I love that layering of images and i love the romantic dark room process i used to do that when i was i when i was a kid i would pretend I'm, i was in a dark room and i actually lit a candle and then i would dip photographs in water and just hang them up i wasn't actually developing it <laughs> and then i would sit there lighting a candle in my room <laughs> with, but uh i love that whole process but the final images uh, they seem to me like mem like they look like memories. So it fit with the song because it's all about memories and and uh, and the, the the head and the bed. I think was one and the show. Yeah, they're just so beautiful, and I I need to stare at them for longer. <laughs> <laughs> so you just answered that you do when you saw them, you totally felt the song in them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's very very cool. Have either of you had? Uh, an inspiration medium like this before? Sarah, have you ever had the inspiration of a song? Hmm. Um, to work not in this direct way. No. Uh, I yeah, mean, it's, uh, right it's now, weird good. It's different. Yeah, it's weird good for sure. Um, I have been working with a, a vertical dance group with dance the last year, but that's diff there's not, hasn't been music yet. So um, that's, the, that's the most recent kind of interdisciplinary collab I've done, but I've not done a response to a music before. To would to you music. do it again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would like do it again? I said, oh yeah, do it totally again? do it again. Yeah, yeah totally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Carrie, have you had the inspiration of a visual before? I, I have done some visual art and I, I actually went to art college in Calgary at Alberta College of Art for, oh, yeah. for four years. And in my fourth year, I, I got the music bug and played at a at a pub and i think i won like a, a talent show and my teacher who i totally loved who was one of my visual art teachers said you should be a musician <laughs> and i was like <laughs> 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 
Ouch. Yeah, in my, I think that's a compliment, but it's kind of an insult. But he was totally, he was totally right. Like I realized, oh, I think I'm more of a musical. I, I feel like I express better through through music. So I'm a terrible visual artist, actually. So no, no. Would you? I'm sure not. Would you do this again? But oh, take inspiration. I, yeah, absolutely. I I really love it. And I yeah. actually would like to say I appreciated the inspiration because uh, since the p pandemic started, I haven't had the wheels going. It's been hard to, they're starting to come back now, but they just ground to a quick halt. So thank you. Yeah. yeah you know, I'm going to take what you just said and kind of leap uh, into some general thoughts. Um, how have you guys, I'll start with you, Carrie. How have you found as as an artist and as a performing artist in particular, what has happened to your head and your heart and your process in general, happy, sad, or otherwise? All of those things. Um, really grateful. I find I find I'm veering wildly from highs, really high, higher than normal and lower than normal. And uh, I have two kids, and uh, so we're all me and my husband and our two kids are are faring well and. But uh, definitely creatively, I've been stumped. And, you know, there's just so much to think about. And it's so fascinating. The pandemic's so fascinating and terrifying at the same time. And, and uh, yeah, it's been a struggle. But I'm also just really have found a lot of things to be grateful for as well. Oh, that's really wonderful. And we're grateful for your art. We are really grateful. Likewise. I saw yours last, the last one. It was, it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, how about you? How have you fared with with the situation? Um, yeah, maybe similar ups and downs. Um, I found this this collaboration or response. This was really good to get me just going out and shooting. Um, I feel like I've been on my computer a lot, doing a lot of zooming, and <laughs> just I just I don't know. I needed to get a kick in the pants, I guess, to get out there. Um, I have had spurts throughout the last eight months or so, but had had have had a hard time focusing actually on like particular projects, even though I have a couple in the back burner <laughs> for sure. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I thought originally this, this project, I was thinking about doing an animation or something. And then I just wanted to be out shooting with my funky camera and like see what happened, you know? So yeah, that, that actual physical, like going and doing something has been really good. Yeah. I, I know it's nice to have a very specific it's, it was, I found it very, challenging to have a specific purpose but it's also very wonderful to have a mm -hmm. specific purpose yeah um can you tell us a little bit more sarah about exactly what we saw <laughs> yes yeah okay i did bring some props um yeah so this is this is one of my cameras i was shooting with it's a pinhole so that's why you keep seeing me walk in and then walk away because each each exposure was like a minute or two so they were long and so this is um, the pictures I shot with the, this camera are, um, they're eight by 10, so they're big. I shot pa paper negatives, which is why we could see the darkroom shots. That's how we could do that. And then I also shot um, with my whole, with the Holga, which is another, this is a film camera. It's really, um, it's a toy camera. It's hard to predict a bit sometimes. And I did do the, the, the shots are, of me are sleeping or I'm pretending to sleep. Those are with the digital, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, I use three different this kinds. Is a really n weird, naive question. Why are you using that weird contraption? <laughs> <laughs> the, the big one, the big camera? Yeah, like as opposed to like a camera camera. Like what, what, it, why, why? What is that? Is uh, I have it? a well, yeah, I have a little soft spot for sure with oldie timey kind of technology. Um, it gives a certain look. Um, I have another one that I used as well, which is a four by five. You can get a really big image, and uh, it has this really enhanced vignette, um, and it slows me down. I have I'm only taking a few shots every time I went out, and I went out a few times, so I had to really think about. It's like about slowing down and really thinking about what you're going to photograph. And I think that's part of it for me. Yeah. That's so cool. Because digital, you're like, I'll choose from these 10,000 later. Durr. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had maybe really 20 cool. pictures to, to like work with. And then a few accidents that ended up adding to it in another way. So, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. So what, 
how did you decide at all what to photograph? I was listening to music. I, I, I actually listened to all three songs and I, I in some ways have responded to all three songs in that, <laughs> in the work, um, like the feel, the mood I felt uh, was coming through in, in a lot of the images. Um, and I, I was listening a lot to Dear Sister and I was thinking about the road that I used we used to drive as a family to Selkirk back and forth. So I drove that highway and listened to the music and then I'd see something and I'd stop and take a photo. It was like really kind of like a flaneur, but in my car, basically. Yeah, doing a, oh. a short road trip. Yeah. How fabulous. And How just fabulous. wandered around. I'd get out and go, this looks neat. And then I'd see something else. And I don't know, I had a, I had a suitcase prop. I brought that with me and, and did stuff because the suitcase is in the song. It seems like a character to me. So, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, so cool. Well, uh, Carrie, can you tell us a little bit about your process, your writing process, your process of viewing the art and how that motivated you and moved you through the creative process? Yeah, I think I, I really loved, I really love collages in general and just, um, and I love the old timey photographs too. Did you see that? the woman who put the pinhole camera up for eight years and took the arc of the, yeah, I bet, I'm sure you did. <laughs> um, but I was just thinking about how it made me, yeah, think about nature and, and urban dwellings and, and how everyone is having to adapt right now to, to different circumstances and, and how I just felt like those images were about connection and I just wanted to delve into that. <laughs> sort of a, yeah, I guess a little, songwriting kind of like therapy as you probably I don't know if you feel the same way but it is uh so yeah I, I it was nice to dwell on connection and nature and and uh and then I when I songwrite I like to just let my brain go and it, it's always working and storing things and then you just sort of take a space and and dive in and try to sort out everything in your head and but let it come naturally try not to force it too much that's sort of what came out of just thinking about those pieces. It doesn't sound forced. It sounded like, I don't know, like a real song that would be amongst your real, it was absolutely beautiful. It was <laughs> absolutely, you. it felt like movie music to me. And your oh. photos are like movie photo. Yeah, like absolutely kind stunning. kind of sing differently actually, now that you mention it. I was, I, I worked with the melody a lot, trying not to, trying to make it move around a lot, like like birds when they're flying. That, was that is super cool. <laughs> that is super cool. Well, I know um, something that Sarah was kind of thinking about was, was if you associate different sounds with different colors or textures or images, or did you have any of that stuff going on? I think just m movement. I wanted to keep it moving and not so much i didn't yeah i didn't want to get too into the recording process and really just try to keep it a yeah just a moving melody i think so when you saw her work it that's what it made you feel is is motion for the music the motion and for the lyrics connection i guess so when you and see freedom <laughs> i was writing about freedom yeah so you yeah we felt I that be free. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So, so you wouldn't say necessarily that when you look at an image, you're like orange, that feels up tempo or orange. That feels like, a like, yeah, well, I guess it didn't this time, but, but often the graphic designer comes out on me and I'll, and I'll think that way. Like I know with, um, I do some movie scoring and it, and it's definitely, I think, in colors often you do movie scoring that is unsurprising a little bit yeah that is unsurprising that is so <laughs> the vibe i wanted i want that in a movie like i want to feel more things um about that so great um <laughs> do you um carrie after seeing the new works of sarah's do you have any questions about specifically those pieces um not not off the top of my head because i would like to look at them some to more. marinate yeah yeah but i i do would uh, my question is can i see them <laughs> or have a also yeah i would love to work together on 
on things because I feel like it was so. I just love. I love layering of. <laughs> like, oh my god. I feel like you guys are a very suited match. It was a funny very... reading her bio. I was like, wait, I lived in Lethbridge. <laughs> she went to the University of Lethbridge, I think, or you. Did oh, you I I done shows there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, and the tree planting connection. And the, there was a few things I wrote her. It was kind of a manic letter, the very first letter. Like, oh, all that these was things. Great. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, and I think I think I wrote to you, but I, I remember driving back from Alberta to Manitoba over the years and listening to your music. So it was just like, ah, <laughs> it's great. So yeah. Cool. What do you guys think in general about the process of this swap? Like, how do, do you think it's a good thing? Do you recommend it to other artists? Like, what do you think of what they've created here? I think it's a great, I think it's great, actually. I, I was uh, not sure what to expect and I didn't have a real plan going in. Um, but it, uh, yeah, it made me kind of think in a different way and try some different things out. And um, it, it, yeah, I, I not being very articulate, but I would definitely, I think it's an interesting process to, to try and engage with and it, it creates a different way of thinking about making work for me anyway. Yeah, it was, it was really valuable. Yeah. Karen, yeah. What do you think of this part? What do you think of the yeah, process? Yeah, I, I, I love it right from the start too. I thought, what a good idea and why doesn't this happen more? Because it, it, it gives a... Uh, exposure to two different art forms to, to people that maybe don't have a lot of, I don't, you know, it's funny, I went to art college and it killed the art in me. Like, <laughs> it, it was so intense that I, to this day, I still have trouble going to art shows and stuff, but, uh, which is too bad, but I, but it is a nice crossover. I think, I really think so too. Yeah. I really think so too. I think, um, I think that the, the brains behind this process, I really tip my hat to them um, in, in experiencing it myself, but then watching other artists go through the process and what has come out of it is just like, I just, I so hard. I feel like crying. I just feel like crying because in this, in this time, you can't showcase your work properly. You can't connect with your audience. You can't connect with other artists properly. So they've actually, forced and manufactured this these connections that I'll be honest when they first pitched it to me I was like oh no like no I was just like oh no like that sounds really hard and weird you know like I don't really like writing a song is already hard enough if I you know you know I I was really skeptical of it but I felt like I was pushed in a way that is really thrilling and it sounds to some degree that both of you, I'm a little bit melodramatic, but, but it sounds like both of you, you know, felt pulled and pushed and tugged and, and experimented. And I mean, just the sheer, just the sheer factor of having a due date for artists is kind of like weird. <laughs> right? In a way. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It helps Maybe light a fire. Less Maybe less weird for you, Sarah. Like I don't know. Do do you have due dates often for for projects? Exhibitions. To show them or to, yeah. Yeah. Exhibitions well, a hard hard deadline. <laughs> right. I mean, Carrie, we don't have deadlines. Like you write a song when you write a damn song, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. Like I was like, <laughs> nobody tells me when to write a song. I guess they do. Or we set our own deadlines. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And I loved that actually. I loved that I was forced to create something. It was painful, but I was like, oh my God, a song. I never would have done this. Yeah, it's true. And I know a lot of, throughout this pandemic, it feels like alone time is almost a selfish thing. So when you have an actual project, you're like, I gotta do this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, totally. Is, is there <laughs> anything else that either of you would simply like to just talk about or, or tell us about before we open the floor to questions? Uh, Devin, Devin, do you have anything to say? <laughs> I know. I just, I, I guess, I guess, well, I, I just, like, this is maybe just more of a comment, but that, that process of, of listening to music and the connection between making music and making visual art, I don't know, like, I really appreciate this sort of, I don't know if it's random association, but this sort of like just pinging off the music as a way of of generating ideas or or engaging with the process is uh, it's really interesting. 
and uh, yeah, I just, I'd totally love to do it again. I thought it was a great process. I totally agree. And I think yeah. it's funny when you, you want to create art as an artist, you want mo you want a reason and you want a thing and you want a thought to create art, but you don't always have one. So, and you, I would never have been like, oh, I'm going to go find a piece of art. I really find interesting. And then I'm going to create a song about it. Like you'd never do that. Mm -hmm. But having someone pitch it to you, it actually felt the officialness of it gave me a lot of permission. I don't know if that's how you felt, but it gave me a lot of permission to be to kind of what you were saying, Sarah, like, what does this color make me feel? What does this image make me feel? Oh, I see a leaf here. What, what's my association with that? And it really let my mind run and I, I don't know permission I guess it gave me permission to look at art again as art and less a business and a like a deadline and it's like, even though there was a deadline you know it it um I don't know you it's being an artist is also a business I think people forget that and this project really brought me back to the art for the reason of art for the sake of art hmm. um so yeah I think yeah, I'm, I'd love to open. I'd love to open the chat up. Does anybody have any questions for these amazing artists? Comments as well would be welcome. Um, for Sarah, which photo was your jumping point for layering? Okay, there? sure. Yeah, well, I um, like in terms of the series, I don't know if this is the question, but the one that I showed the live like photoshopping of. <laughs> was the first one that I did and I really liked that power line shot and I thought uh this is kind of speaking to this landscape that you know where are you going to go dear sister <laughs> this like this, this sort of spot so I started with that and then I had some photos that didn't work so they were just like chemical marks so I added that one and I was trying to integrate different views of like I did these kind of blurry kind of shots of me uh, looking like I was sleeping so but it kind of started with the landscape shots first and I wanted to have a pinhole in every single one yeah can i just interrupt this process you both of you know the answer to this what where is the pinhole where i don't i don't <laughs> sorry okay oh. oh that that in this thing there is the pinhole is it, it literally a pinhole yes oh it is it's an aperture so there's no shutter this is the shutter and that that's the lens is a pinhole that's it so it's a really tiny, tiny, tiny aperture. So it, that's why it takes a long time. So yeah. after you push the button, you just go like have a coffee over to the left well, and wait it was, out? Yeah, it's timing it, but basically, yeah, it's like two <laughs> well, minutes. Why do you wait too long? What if it's what if it's uh, I did minutes? that and that totally overexposed a few. There was a few that oh. totally didn't work out. I had a, a couple good days, but there was, I mean, I was okay with that too. Love I'm not that. working. Yeah. How Love long that. do you leave them for it? About? Depend on the depended on the day. The first day I went out, which is the really sunny day along the river, I pretty much overexposed everything. That was like a couple hours, or I, I know I like a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes, okay. too bright. And then uh, the day, the second day, when I didn't actually document me f photographing, that was the best day. And the third yeah. day, I had quite a few underexposed. So, so basically, I kind of had a light is out. Like basically yeah, the with, sun that day. Yeah, basically what, how bright it was and um, if it was overcast. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, audience, but I'm going to be doing some Googling after <laughs> this call because I've never heard of a pinhole camera. I'm a terrible <laughs> artist. Uh, Carrie, this person would also have a question for you. Did you rock the lyric kind of first or did you kind of melody it up or where? how did your process go? This one, it changes for me, but this one was lyrics first because I, I started sort of brainstorming ideas from the from the pictures. And so I started with the lyrics, yeah. Mm, awesome. Um, I've got someone else here saying, given the personal and intimate aspect when creating art, what motivated the artist to jump in and take that risk? Um, I think we've kind of touched that, but I can put it back to you guys. Sarah, do you have anything? Um, it's intimate, kind of what was your jumping motivation? Um, well, you know, it may be a little bit just like, well, let's just, let's just see what we get and, and try it out. And, uh, and as soon as I, I honestly, when I'm making work, as you, as soon as I start engaging with the process, I, I the self-consciousness sort of disappears and I'm get so engaged with what I'm doing that it's like, I kind of forget that I might be sharing this. <laughs> at some point. So, and then, you know, by that point you're like, well, this is what I made. So let's share it and see what happens. I don't know. Once it, it's, I'm in the flow of it, I kind of forget in a way. Oh, yeah. yeah. How about you, Carrie? Do you have anything? I'm definitely the same. 
I started with a purpose and then I completely forgot and just became driven by the song. It's a real piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and I, and I really am happy with it and I think we'll probably put it on our next album. So. I love that. <laughs> love that. Awesome. Um, to the powers that be at Manitoba Arts Network, um, do you think we could watch the videos one more time? And then while those videos are playing, if possible, we can leave the chat open. Um, but you can also tell me no, but I know someone asked it in the, in the chat. And also I wouldn't mind checking it out one more time. Um... They said to get your suitcase packed It is splitting at the seams It is splitting at the seams After hearing you talk about it way cool let's go and play the other video again and just keep in mind everybody you are welcome to add your questions into the chat but let's watch the other again I'm tethered to you
Yay! <laughs> Feathers in a hurricane, girl. Mm. I love the, both of your work so so much. You guys are such special artists. I thought of a couple things. Um, Sarah, can you talk about your works that Leaf Rappers was inspired by? The birds. Yeah. What 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 am I looking at? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, that work was in response to um, a homestead in Southern Alberta, a Coots Homestead. A fellow named Jim Coots lived there, and he was a. Uh, uh, this was a project I worked on actually through the University of Lethbridge. I think was um, I was kind of invited to, to make a work in response to that that place. And he was a avid bird watcher and had this relationship with that landscape, and so he had this. Um, log that he would write the birds that he saw in and so I thought that was really a beautiful way to connect and know about a place and um, he was also a real historian and avid reader so I combined uh, images and um, kind of magazines from the era of his life and made them into the birds that he saw on his land. So yeah. let me understand this. Leaf Rapids was inspired by your art which was inspired by a log which was inspired by a man which was inspired by birds. A lot, of <laughs> a lot of layers <laughs> yeah well that is really neat I, so you actually do take inspiration you're used to kind of vibing off of inspo and creating something yeah for sure yeah ah, so cool uh carrie is that a real theremin you used it is so cool yes mm -hmm. it is really cool that that melody in i think it's the first song right it's the sisters one yeah, yeah. yeah of course it is you didn't have a theremin in the other video uh such a great melody line like addictingly beautiful hauntingly beautiful that line that you wrote in with the with the theremin thanks i like the theremin for that it's just it limits you to one single note so you you have to make it count <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you harmonized them like you must have layered oh maybe I, I might have layered it there was some theremin harmonies in there girl i'm pretty sure uh maybe <laughs> i can't oh, remember now super cool it is super super beautiful well i don't think oh i have one more question for you sarah great filming and editing what did you use to film everything oh um yeah i used my phone actually but i do have to i do have to say that i i kind of riffed on the original dear sister video which is very old timey so my making of part of the video is very much uh an homage let's say to the original video which is also very charlie chaplin-esque um oldie timey so yeah i did that all in post but i used my phone basically well your artistry shines right through even the the video the editing the the, the entire vibe of it hmm. uh cool. carrie we've got a what is a theremin question <laughs> oh um how long do you have <laughs> uh, it's a one of the first electronic instruments uh, invented in the early 1920s by a Russian scientist and it's it's an instrument that you don't touch so you're just interrupting frequencies in the air so there's a tall antenna oh I'm 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 turned around okay wait <laughs> my my image is reversed so there's a tall antenna and then a, a looped one so one controls the pitch and one controls the volume but you're not touching anything so you're just interrupting electromagnetic frequencies. It looks like Manitoba Arts Network has added a link to the Wikipedia page <laughs> for the theremin. And I highly, if you, if you, if anybody out there hasn't seen it, I, you should look up a video, a YouTube video. They're the coolest thing. I've seen you use it, I believe, Carrie, in person. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very cool instrument. Um, I just want you ladies to know someone has said even more powerful the second time. Thank you so much for sharing all this beauty. I've got a question from another arts council did this project inspire you to look at other songs slash art pieces to recreate this process again i think we've kind of touched that i'd say yes we all loved it i'd do it again i i mean I, this is still quite fresh um but i would do it again for sure yeah i would too yeah it um i will also mention that I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but they chose me to host, so I'm going to say it. Yeah, so the Canada Arts Council did fund it so that each of us did get to put some coins in our pockets. And I will also just add that it not only is it so fabulous to have the motivation to create a piece that it sounds like you guys are all happy with your with your pieces and would include it in your body of work happily. Um, but to to be paid and compensated for that creative process is 
pretty special right now in general, but especially right now. So just so our audience knows that that is a component that is that is there. That is wonderful. It's nice to be working. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's work. Yeah, it's work. Yeah. It's great. Uh, I don't think there are any other questions. Do Is there anything else either of you would like to add? Um, just that anytime you want to work together again, I would love to. <laughs> Woo me too. Totally. That'd be great. I'd yeah, love it. It was absolutely stunning, guys. Absolutely stunning. Good hosting, gonna... Jen. Yes. Very good hosting. Good questions. <laughs> oh, well, great art. It was, it was easy to, to want to engage both of you. I definitely would love to see and hear more of both of your works. Um, I think it's so easy to forget as an artist, especially how much art is being created every minute of every day. And you kind of get in your own little world and being exposed to, to this tonight is so inspiring and motivational and just thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to wrap this, am I? Nope. Nobody, no voice of God is going to tell me any other way. So, um, hold, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Yes, I can wrap it. Well, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Unless there's anything else anyone would like to add, I will, I will conclude this. Oh, actually, I think I'm I, I would just say things. thanks to everyone who tuned in and shared the, shared in our discussion or yeah. Mm -hmm. We're here for the show. <laughs> so uh, Manitoba Arts Network would like me to say that they would like to thank everyone for attending. Thank you both. Thank the artists for sharing your artwork with us. Um, we'll be posting the videos and this recorded event for you to peruse at your leisure on the YouTube channel for Manitoba Arts Network. And audience, please save the date for the next live stream event on Monday, January 27, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Manitoba time, <laughs> featuring musician Amy Bishop and visual artist Kathy Ugrin. So please tune back in. Please, <laughs> hello, you big fellow. We've got a, we've got a photo bomber. We've got, oh. we've got a video bomber in the house. <laughs> Disgruntled looking dog. <laughs> a little disgruntled look. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful work. Beautiful work, guys. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.